Uh, estamos aquí en mi casa. Hay un termómetro, uh, termómetro uh, en el patio de atrás y el termómetro me dice que estamos a 42 grados. Así que hace frío para nosotros, para nosotros hace frío. Y aún, aún peor, even worse, aún peor si se sale de la piscina y estamos a 42 grados. ¡Ay, Dios mío! Ok. Uh, bien. Bueno, uh, no sé cuántas personas van a asistir. I'm not quite sure how many people are here and there might be a few people out. But, pero, pero, vamos a empezar, vamos a empezar. Y vamos a empezar con, con qué momento. A ver, a ver. Hay un, uh, voy a, voy a enseñarles este, uh, enlace. I'm going to show you, show you this link, share it with you later on, más tarde. Uh, hay un, oh, un calendario de vocabulario. Oh. Wow. Okay, vamos a ver. It will not do the, the, uh, later It will not do the later uh, or the earlier days. Pero podemos ver, podemos ver oh, el 14. El, ah, oh, gingerbread man. ¿Cómo se dice a ah, gingerbread man? Wow. Un hombre de <laughs> ginger. Sí, gingerbread. Uy, qué difícil. Todo el vocabulario en el calendario uh, uh, aquí uh, se refiere a, a las cosas navideñas. Sí, uh, vamos a ver. A uh, un hombre, que they might call it, uh, they might refer to muñe muñequito. I'm not sure. Un hombre de así, uh, jengibre. Jengibre, jengibre mm -hmm. es ginger. Wow. Y, ah, sí, un hombre de jengibre, sí, eso es. Uh, uh, hice el 13, creo que no. Hice el 13, ¿dónde está el 13? No están en orden. Oh, elf, elf. Hay, hay, hay dos posibilidades. Voy, voy, a, voy a escribir aquí duende. Ah, o oh, oh, un duende. Quiere an elf. Un duende. Ah, sí, un duende. Un duende. Duende es kind of a special word. En español, duende es especial. Duende es elf. Uh, no sé refiere estrictamente a, 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 a la persona muy bajita de Santa Claus. Uh, duende uh, also refers to anyone moved by the spirit. The, uh, yeah, it, it's a, kind of an interesting and interesting word. But I know in Harry Potter when they use Elves in Harry Potter, they use duende as the word for that. La traducción a, así. Ok, vale. Uh, bueno, vamos a practicar y tengo que cambiar mi, mi pantalla un poquito. I had an update and some subsequent malfunctions I had to fix this morning before we start. So, uh, bueno, voy a empezar, voy a empezar con una, uh, no, con un vídeo, con un vídeo. No es una historia, uh, estrictamente no es historia, pero es un vídeo muy interesante porque no es muy difícil, primero, y segundo, uh, se refiere a, a las fiestas de la temporada. Uh, it refers to the holiday season and gift giving and uh, all of that. So, okay, vamos a ver. When, cuando, se, uh, cuando hablamos de la Navidad, 
Sí, uh, y, y se, se dice simplemente Hanukkah, Hanukkah, es bien así, Hanukkah, pero para la Navidad tienen la, la palabra, la Navidad, pero hay, hay una forma de Navidad que se usa para referir a cosas de la Navidad, por ejemplo, y es navideño. Navideño. Navideño would be the adjective form of Navidad. Entonces, el árbol navideño, a Christmas tree, or árbol de Navidad. La temporada navideña, Christmas season, ¿sí? La comida navideña, Christmas holiday food. Sí, uh, así, navideño, navideña, y uh, aquí uh, vamos a escuchar, es un video de siete minutos, no es tan largo, y este dice aquí arriba, este experimento social hizo cambiar, hizo cambiar, o oh, pretérito, hizo cambiar a 27 jóvenes sus regalos de Navidad. This social experiment made 27 young people change their Christmas gifts. Oh. Tú lo cambiarías. Would you change it? Okay. Uh, uh, y tengo que cambiar. Um, uh, I'll, leave the, I'll leave the subtitles up in English. ¿Quiénes son las personas más importantes de, su, uh, de tu vida? So it's going to begin with that. Uh, ¿Pueden ver la pantalla? Can you see the screen? ¿Sí? Sí. 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 Ok, vale. A ver, mi madre, mi padre, mi hermana y una amiga. Lo primero que me viene así es mi madre, eh, mi hermano, eh, mi novio me mataría por no decirle a él, pero las dos... My, my boyfriend would kill me if I didn't mention him. Las personas que me vienen como más importantes son ellos dos. Diría mi hermano, pero es que... Uh, I would say my brother, <laughs> but... Me cuesta un poco más decirlo porque... Como... Uh, it, it cost me, it's hard for me to admit it. Como es un independiente y no but, tengo... But he's like an independent guy. Un don, just me, a guy. He's an independent guy. Una relación así muy... Debería decir mi hermano. Pero yo creo que diría mi mejor amiga Alba. Uh, I, I should say my brother, but I, get, but I would say my best friend is really yeah, the closest person to me. Mi mejor amiga Alba. My best friend Alba. Mi madre. La primera. De todas. Eh, mis dos hermanos. Pequeños. Es decir que siempre he sido hijo único hasta los 25 años. Mi madre me dio el ser persona con 50. Mm. Creo que es mi abuela. ¿Pueden ser dos solamente? Es difícil, ¿eh? Es difícil esto de... ¿Qué más sería importante? Ah, ¿qué le vas a regalar? En vez de decir dar un regalo, give a gift, there is a special verb that means to give a gift all rolled into one word. And that is regalar. We take regalo, el, el sustantivo, the noun, regalo, and we turn it into a verb, and we turn it into an AR verb. Regalar. Okay? Entonces, cuando dicen, ¿qué les vas a regalar en Navidad? What are you going to give them as a gift on Christmas? Okay. Pues había pensado en, en el libro de... I thought about a book. De Sheldon Cooper, de Big Bang Theory. Quiero regalarle un dron. Oh, I want to give him a dron. Un dron. Eh, en español se dice, uh, es una palabra prestada. That is a loan word. They just take dron without the E at the end, right? Dron. Estos que tienen una camarita y It's tal. got a little camera on the light and stuff. mirando la Nintendo Mini. Esta casa I'm looking at a Nintendo Mini. Mini. Eh, pero es que está agotada. Pues es que es un poco estrambótico esto que voy a decir, pero ya lleva bastón y tiene un bastón que a mí no me gusta nada. Entonces le quiero... Ah, uh, oh, a cane. She's talking about a cane. Bastón. Uh, like a walking cane. El arma de cañita. <laughs> ya tengo mucho de los regalos comprados. 
para ella. Yo siempre me adelanto. Pero estoy esperando uno ahí concreto que ya le hace mucha ilusión, que es el nuevo iPhone 7 Plus. Ay, es un vaso que tiene forma de... Iba a decir foco, pero no es foco. Es eh, óptica. Eso. Pues una cosa que son como castañas en bombones, que le gustan bastante. Un videojuego. <risa> que le molan. Una cajita musical de esas que abres y una bailarina y suena. Creo que ha sacado un disco la pantoja y, y le gusta. Y, y son... son... Regalos muy normales, sí, un iPhone, un, uh, uh, videojuegos, un Nintendo, todo, sí. Uh. Voy a regalar eso. Oh, y si te toca la lotería, and if you win the lottery, para que sepan, so you know, this is done with, this is done with Spaniards, I can tell by their accent, but also one of the guys said, le mola. Le mola is exactly like saying le gusta. En España se dice le mola. He likes it instead of le gusta. Le mola is the slang that they use instead of le gusta in Spain. Okay. So le mola, yeah, he, he likes that. And when we say si te toca la lotería, uh, tocar, you know, means to play an instrument or to touch something right to touch but when they talk about winning the lottery this is the verb that they use to say it's like saying it's your turn oh your number came up so this is kind of like saying if your number comes up in the lottery para que sepan so you know in spain this is like almost more important than going to church for a lot of these people i'm gonna go out on a limb it probably is el 22 es el día tradicional de la lotería en España. There is a nationwide lottery. The big day. It's like the big Powerball day. Comes up and it is always on. Siempre es el 22. It's always the 22nd. It is a big deal. It is a big social thing. Everybody in your office will typically... Uh, have people sign up to get a ticket together for La Loteria. It is considered like a social thing. You know, you're kind of gauche if you don't <laughs> sign up with the office pool. Uh, families will buy another ticket that they share just with their family. People will buy tickets, of course, just for themselves. But it's considered kind of a social event. Uh, and I'll play you a little video of what that looks like, just because it's sort of interesting to know. It is a big televised thing, and everybody tunes in to watch what it looks like and they have little kids from uh i don't know what it is it, it must be a kids choir in madrid um you know they roll out the lotto ball and they they the little kids walk very specifically with their hand behind their back and their little choir uniform they're they're choir kids and they walk with the little balls and they sing the lotto numbers They, and they sing how much money you win. And it's always something big like, you know, uh, ocho mil euros, eight thousand euros. It's some, always something like that. Uh, or ocho yeah. millones de euros. So they, they draw the lottery balls. Does this literally mean, and if the lottery touches it you? It does literally mean that. But, but tocar is also used... Besides that, and besides playing instruments, to say it's your turn. Oh, okay. So, okay. Uh, and that is what it is close to here. So, por ejemplo, I would see, say, uh, uh, a ti te, to te toca uh, esta noche, esta noche, a ti te toca uh, la uh, lavar los platos. Tonight, it's your turn to wash dishes. Oh. See? Uh, so this is used when it's your turn. So this is like, it's your turn with lotto, meaning your number has come up. Okay. Okay. So if you know that it means it's your turn, it's on you to do this. I you see. get it. See that. Y si te toca la lotería means if your lucky number comes up. So, okay. If 
if you won the big lotto and you didn't have to give the little gift that you have already put in your <laughs> budget, right? Right. If you hit it big and now you're going to change your gift because you hit it big. What if you won the lottery? I put up the English so you can see it up a little bit more easily too. Yo creo Ooh. que le compraría una casa rural en el campo. Ooh. No, no hay presupuesto. Un Rolls Royce. Que vio uno y le dijo que le gustaba muchísimo. Un Rolls Royce, ya sé cuál. Un chalé con jardín, que estuviera al lado de una playa, que estuviera céntrico también para no coger coche. Eso le compraría, para empezar. Su propio estudio. Hacer un viaje juntas, en furgoneta. Es su sueño. Un, un viaje a lo largo del mundo. Lo primero, irme con ella a Nueva York. Hombre, un viaje a Egipto. Le montaría una empresa para ella. Le pagaría sus deudas. <risa> I pay off their debts. Ah, sí. Le regalaría una moto de carreras. Uh, un, un, uh, sí. Uh, le regalaría. I would give her a, a motorbike. Una bici buena. Con pura sangre española. Un buen caballo. Construirle un refugio de perros. La cambiaría de casa, probablemente. La verdad que um, se merece una casa en la playa. Una casa en la playa. Sí, y, y uh, también muy normal, muy normal. Uh, oh, y si fueran sus últimas navidades. And if these were their last Christmas ever. What if you knew it was that last Christmas you were ever going to spend with that person? And here's where everything changes. Si fueran, if it were. And fueran is from ser. How odd. It comes actually from fueron with an on on the end instead of an an on the end. Fueron is a past subjunctive. And it means, uh, hypothetically, what if this were, what if this season were that person's last Christmas season? Then what would you buy? Ooh, y las cosas cambian. Things are going to change in a real hurry. Es un supuesto... Una buena pregunta. Es una pregunta difícil. Oh. This is hard for all these people. They do not take this lightly. Families are very, very close in Spain in particular. It is not unusual for multi-generations to live within the same apartment building. Uh, that That is still um, uh, common for a number of people. So that, that family closing and, and the whole holiday season is very much a family-oriented holiday. So this hits people very, very hard if you're looking at general Spanish public, even amongst the young people. Um, <clears throat> um... No le regalaría nada. Bueno, le regalaría mi presencia, yo creo. Estar con ella. I would give my presence. I would give of my time. Eh, pues... Le pediría perdón por muchas cosas. I would ask vez. forgiveness for many things. Es que hemos discutido en plan serio. Y... Intentaría... Intentaría esforzarme más en en tener un buen trabajo y en, y en demostrarle que, que valgo la pena como que val hoy hay y demostrarle que valgo la pena como hijo and and prove that it's I am worth the effort as a son ay Dios mío ok a ver hijo. me lo llevaría a no sé al pueblo de sus abuelos I would take her to her grandparents' village. Wow. Unos días unidos con sus abuelos que no que no que no les ve nunca o con su familia. Wow, a mí. Es decir, mi tiempo. La llevaría al pueblo porque ella no tiene coche y nunca la lleva a nadie y yo creo que le haría ilusión. Ser más sinceros el uno con el otro, no sé decirnos las cosas que no nos hemos dicho, él por ser como es. Y yo por ya haberme vuelto muy cómoda. Intentaría reunir a la familia entera. Ese sería como mi regalo para ella, como intentar reunir a la familia entera en casa otra vez. Y que estemos todos juntos. Me lo traería a casa porque él está en una residencia. Y pasaría todos los días con él. 
pasear, jugar al mus, jugar al dominó, al chinchón, llevarle a que me viera jugar al fútbol. Cosas sencillas. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound. Creo que ponemos el corazón en lo que nos dicen que tenemos que ponerlo. Si nos paráramos a pensar, no lo pondríamos en las cosas. Vivimos como borregos. Todos hacia adelante, sin mirar hacia a los lados. Yeah, we live like sheep. Yeah, I see. Sin disfrutar <risa> los momentos de la vida, las pequeñas cosas. Y hasta que la vida no nos dice hasta aquí. Tenemos en la cabeza que las personas van a estar ahí siempre, que la gente que nos rodea va a estar ahí para siempre. Y entonces, como, o sea, a lo mejor no decimos un te quiero porque lo damos por hecho, es como si esa persona sabe de sobra que, que yo le quiero mucho, pero a lo mejor esa persona no lo sabe o no lo siente así. Estaría bastante bien que, que no me tengas que poner en esta situación para darme cuenta de estas cosas. Yeah, all came before knowing, uh, uh, came through the filming without knowing beforehand the questions that we were going to ask. And íbamos a realizar, um, yeah. Íbamos, we were going to, okay? The way we say we were going to is to put uh, uh, ir in uh, imperfecto. And instead of voy a realizar, I'm going to carry out. Uh, realizar is to carry out something, to actually accomplish it, okay? It does not mean to realize. It looks like it realized, but it does not mean the English word realize that we were going to ask they translated but that we were going to carry out okay uh de antemano is a great little phrase de antemano beforehand ahead of time is de antemano antemano literally means in front of your hand okay so de antemano uh is beforehand everybody attended the studio the uh, the recording studio without knowing without being familiar ahead of time with the questions that we were going to pose to them. Okay. Everybody changed the gifts they would give. Regalar tiempo con personas, yo creo que es el mejor regalo porque precisamente no lo puedes comprar y es algo que nunca va a volver. Entonces es como un regalo exclusivo y único. Somos millennials. Nos mueven los valores. We're moving values. Ok. Interesante. Uh, es, es muy interesante. Voy a enviarles a ustedes el a link, el enlace. I'll, I'll send you that link. It is an interesting little link. Algo, uh, debemos, debemos pensar un poquito más en las cosas importantes, ¿no? Uh, y, y buena oportunidad de escuchar el español de, de los jóvenes. So keep in mind a little bit that, that le mola or le molan is the same thing as le gusta, le gustan. Es igual. Uh, bien. Ok, uh, después de eso, uh, hay preguntas. Debemos empezar con preguntas de la semana pasada. Do we need to pick up with any questions you have from last week on the set estar videos or anything there before we take off with the pictures? Me gusta el video de Frida Kahlo porque ah. es muy lente. Muy, muy lenta. Ah, sí, es una película muy lenta. Sí, sí. <coughs> trato, yo trato de enviarles, I try to send you guys, trato de enviarles videos uh, con personas que uh, 
graban, record, graban específicamente hablando un español muy fácil de entender, ¿sí? Y es difícil. Hay una teoría, there is a theory, hay una teoría que, que debes escuchar solamente las personas que hablan en un ritmo muy normal, muy rápidamente, porque es así, así se habla, así se habla la gente, pero es difícil. Um, uh, it's very interesting. Some people say you should just be thrown in the pool. Cuando estamos a 42 grados, when you're at 42 degrees, you should just be thrown in the pool at 42 degrees and left to fend for yourself and sort that, you know what, out, sort that stuff out. But uh, in reality, you know, if you are uh, if you are not taking Spanish for a graded test, it is very frustrating to be put in that situation where we throw you in the pool and just say, get yourself out of that. So, um Certain channels do a better job at doing uh, slower stories. And actually, as instructors, we were always taught, by the way, teachers, you're talking too fast already to your students. <laughs> Slow it down. Pero ahí es difícil, es difícil uh, interpretar a... Uh, uh, eh, bueno, si, si debo hablar un poquito más rápidamente o así, en un ritmo totalmente normal, sería muy difícil. Así que, bueno. Uh, She repeated herself often, too. And that, that, is, nice. that is the other key, the repetition. When you're just in for an hour mm -hmm. uh, a week with a live person, The, the slower pace has to be there for you to pick it up. And also the repetition has to be there to embed how those words link together for it to sink in. Okay. Um, uh, like we, as we talk to little kids, um, I, I am looking at things different. I've, I've got a, a, a new client who's an eight-year-old Hey, me cuesta. Wow. It is really tough for me to walk work with eight-year-olds because I am going to confess to you, I am not a fan. No soy aficionada de los de ocho, uh, ocho años, ocho años. I am not a real fan of the eight-year-old crowd, uh, but I have to literally get into a totally different gear with a little kid because it has to be repeat, 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 show this, repeat it again, show it, repeat it again, and Do it so that the kid will stay on screen. Oh, my God. Guy, Dios mío. Es difícil. Okay. Uh, isn't, it still, isn't it still thought to be true that somebody like an eight-year-old will do much better learning a new language than someone like us old fogies here? Es interesante. Uh, hasta cierto punto. Sí up to a certain point. So what I do, because this person is kind of in a special situation where they had a live-in nanny who is no longer there. And the parent just wants her to hear just Spanish all the time. You cannot teach grammar to an eight-year-old. <laughs> do not do it. That, kid, that kid will never show up for you again, okay? So, uh, but it's very, very interesting. Her pronunciation is absolutely perfect. She can repeat things perfectly on pitch. Right accent, right stress, everything just correct. And I actually make sure she sees my mouth because her reading is okay, but you know, not perfect, but okay. It helps her a little bit. So she looks at how I move my mouth. She listens And her pronunciation is totally perfect, but she gets stuff wrong all the time. So it's like your little kid saying to you, if you remember when you have little kids, or if you have grandkids now, you're in that mode now. Oh, uh, today we today we go to the store, right? Yeah. And you never smack the kid up the side of the head and say, hell, oh, you don't say we go. 
you know, you say, oh, honey, we went. Yeah. Or you don't even say that. You don't even really correct him. You just repeat it back. Oh, we went. So all I do to her is repeat back what the right thing is after she makes a mistake. And sometimes that sinks in and sometimes it does not because she's going to need to hear it about probably 10 times until she gets that. Así es. So it is. Y es interesante, sí. Es otra cosa. It is totally a different way of doing that. Sí, uh, Marilyn, Marilyn, sí. yo te entiendo más fácil que otras personas cuando uh, hablas rápido. Ah, ok. Esto también es normal. A veces... Mucha gente dice, many people say, mucha gente dice que, ah, sí, para mí es muy fácil entender a mi profe, a mi maestro, a mi maestra. Es muy fácil entender a mi maestra. Pero cuando escucho a otras personas, sí, es, sí. es muy difícil. Esto sí, tam, también, también es muy normal. Porque el ritmo, el tono de voz de otra persona, el acento, aún el, el acento de otra persona, hay cambios, cambios, cambios con cada persona y es difícil. Y ayuda mucho, les va a ayudar mucho. It's going to help you a lot. Les va a ayudar mucho. Escuchar a muchas personas, un montón de personas hablando uh, con acentos distintos, con, uh, de edades distintos, ayuda mucho. It really helps a lot to listen to many different people. Um, para, para mí, en inglés, es más difícil escuchar a un niño, niño, niño de dos o tres años en inglés, es muy difícil para mí. Tengo que cambiar mi manera de escuchar. Sí. Cuando escucha a un niño de un, una edad muy joven, ¿no? Uh, y, y es así con todas las personas. Entonces, tu reacción, Diana, es muy normal. normal. Sí. Así es. Uh, con, con todos los seres humanos, with all human beings. Así es, así es. Ok, bueno, vamos a ver, vamos a practicar con las fotos. ¿Quieren, quieren trabajar todos juntos? Sí. O en grupos, ok. Juntos, juntos. Todos juntos, ok. Vamos a ver, vamos a ver. Y tengo que engrandecer eh, la foto, las fotos un poquito aquí y tengo que cambiar. Ok, a ver, vamos a ver. Y vamos a hablar, claro, lo más posible, lo más posible en el pasado, pero está bien si ustedes tienen una observación en... En el presente, uh, bueno, está bien, está bien. Uh, ok, si hablamos aquí de esta foto, tenemos, tenemos a, un, a un niño uh, y un perro muy activo, digamos, ¿no? Uh, ¿Qué podemos Soto. decir? Soto con su perro. Ah, sí, el niño. Ah, ¿Jugó? Saltó. Oh, oh, oh. ¿El perro? Saltó. The dog jumped? Sí. Los dos, the two of them. Los dos saltaron. Pum, pum. Sí. Bien. El, el, el niño y su perro... Jugaron juntos. Jugaron juntos. Excelente. Sí, jugaron juntos. They played together. Perfecto. El, el, chico, el, el niño y su perro corri, corrieron y jugaron 
con la poleta en el parque. parque. Ah, corrieron y jugaron uh, uh, con la pelota, with the ball? Sí. Con la pelota. En, en, el, parque. en el parque. En el parque, sí. El chico y su perro jugaban con una pelota todos los días. Ah, jugaban con la pelota ah. todos los días. Es distinto a, a, a jugar un, en el parque hoy, esta mañana, ayer. Sí, ok, jugaban con la pelota todos los días. Ah, podemos combinar una observación del tiempo, por ejemplo, con la actividad de jugar con la, la pelota. ¿Cómo diríamos, por ejemplo, it was nice weather when they were playing outside? Ooh, it was nice weather. Hacer buen tiempo. Oh, hacer buen tiempo. Cuando, it was... Cuando jugaban adent, adentro, adentro. Inside? Oh, no. Uh, afuera. Afuera. Okay. ¿Cómo se dice it was nice weather? Hacer buen tiempo. Hacer buen tiempo. Mm. Ambos, ambos estaban muy felices. Estaban muy felices. Okay. I wanted to say... He jumped for it. And it. I was trying to think that it would go in front of Salto, but my phone came up with Salto por esa. Sí. Okay. Uh, okay, let's finish this little idea and we're going to come right back to that okay. right away. See, sí. okay. Cuando jugaban afu afuera, hacía buen tiempo. Oh. Okay, I wanted to finish this Go idea. Ahead. When they were playing, it was nice weather. Okay? Todo es descripción. So uh, both when, are an imperfecto. Uh, sí, sí. Uh, oh, oh es, es, posible, es posible también cuando jugaron. When they played outside, it was nice weather. Uh, oh, jugaron. Uh, es posible. Uh, las, las dos maneras de expresar son correctos. Depende. If you want to say, while they were playing, it was nice weather, then we would keep it jugaban. If you want to say, when they played, and you mean it's over with, and you're really just done, not describing anything, then it's cuando jugaron. ¿Sí? Hacía buen tiempo. Pero hay la posibilidad de combinar Sí, la, las dos ideas o las dos descripciones, ¿ok? Uh, so, entonces, sí, estaban muy felices. They were very happy. That would not be pretérito because we're talking about how they felt. That's straight out description. Y uh, no la otra es, oh, they jumped for it. Sí. Yeah, and I thought there'd be a pronoun in front of the verb, but it came up, salto por esa. esa. Ok. ¿Y por qué? Ah, saltó por la pelota. Okay. Why can we not say, because we can't, uh, la saltó? Uh, jump, saltar, jump, is not a verb that takes a direct object. Oh. Boom. I jumped it. Oh, maybe sense. your car battery. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. So you jump for it. You jump after it. Okay. You jump to get that thing. That makes so sense. We, we need a prepositional phrase. So we cannot say la salto. Okay. Uh, no es posible. Some verbs take a direct object. Some do not. Right. See it or see her um um work with people work doesn't 
take a direct object, right? Uh, to do it, to achieve something that takes a direct object, but just trabajar, right? Uh, will not take a direct up. So some, it, it has to do with that whole transitive, intransitive verb thing, which oh. I don't even, you know, I don't even think about those yeah. terms in English. Ni mucho menos, no? En español. Uh, pero así es. But, you know, you get the picture. Some, I do. Yeah, yeah, some things just don't take a direct object. So I can't take a lo, la, los, las. Okay. And uh, fíjense, fíjense, notice. Uh, uh, go back to that video uh, that I showed you about the Christmas gift yes. and watch how they phrase it. Put up the both English and the Spanish and and notice, you know, uh, iban a realizar. They were going to do uh, realizar means to achieve something, to get to a goal, to actually get something done. You know, there are special verbs in Spanish that do jobs like that. Realizar is one when you actually do a job or accomplish uh, accomplish a task. Yeah. Realizar, realizar is to accomplish a task. So you might hear lo, uh, lo realizó. He accomplished it. Or lo logró. He achieved it. He did it. Lo hizo. He did it. There mm -hmm. are verbs that wind up working like that that are kind of good vocabulary words to keep in mind. Hacer is the lowest level. And, and you know, it has to do with levels of complexity. Hacer means to do. Right? So lo hizo. Uh, lo hizo, he did it, or she did it, lo hizo. And that's pretty low level. It's okay. Uh, lo realizó bumps up hacer. It means, you know, hitting a goal, accomplishing some kind of a task, which is a little higher level than hacer. Okay. Realizar. And lograr is, again, in that kind of like, higher vocabulary lograr means to achieve to uh, a lot of times they translate the english phrase i did it not as lo hice but lo logré lo logré oh. if i did it is not is something more important than making my bed if I did it, uh, signals a, a a bigger a bigger achievement than gee, I set the table. It'll probably become lo logré. I did it, meaning I nailed it. I did that right. Something that's in a more important job than just lo hice. So you know, it's a vocabulary thing too. Hacer, realizar, lograr, right? When you achieve something in your work, in your profession, as a big project, right? That involved many, step, many steps to get to a finished project. Lograr or realizar are better vocabulary words than hacer. Para que sepan, so you know. It is actually fairly common for people to use, you know, lo logré, I did it, meaning, yeah, I got this big task done. Okay. Si hablamos con, de la chica con, con quién, con su mamá o es abuela, no, ah, es con su mamá. ¿Qué debemos hacer? La niña. ¿Qué la niña y su madre estaban en la cocina. La niña y su madre estaban en la cocina. Siempre estaban en la cocina, ¿sí? No diríamos, no sería muy común a, a uy, la niña. Uy, a ver. 
uh, la niña y su madre estaban en la cocina. No se dice estuvieron en la cocina. We would not use estuvieron en la cocina. A menos que, a menos que. Unless we're pinpointing that to indicate it was a specific day or a specific time. And then they had left later on. So the most common way, you know, I, es posible decir la niña y su madre estuvieron en la cocina um, solamente media hora, just a half an hour. See, if our focus is, oh, it was for this period of time, estuvieron might be appropriate, pero lo más normal, the most usual would be to treat this as description. Estaban en la cocina. The percentage of time you would use estaban is way, way, way higher than mm -hmm. estuvieron. We're only going to switch to estuvieron if you wanted to emphasize, oh, it was during this little period of time. And most of the time, we're not emphasizing that. We're just describing. So estaban is more appropriate. Okay. La niña y su madre estaban en la cocina. ¿Qué más? Antes de que la niña ayudó a su madre, se llevó las manos. Ah. Ooh. Is that are you? Oh, this is muy yeah. complicado. Wow. This antes de que the, automatically throws you have to use a wrench in, but we'll use see it anyway so that you know. Yeah. Antes de la niña uh, uh, le ayudara a su mamá. Se lavó los mano, las manos. Uh, se lavó las manos. Okay. Muy complicado. Ah, antes de que la niña le ayudara a su mamá, before the girl helped her mom, se lavó las manos. She washed her hands. And here's the part you're going to recognize. <coughs> se lavó las manos. She washed her hands. And she did that before she was sticking her hands in the dough, right? Okay. So, se lavó las manos, pretérito, boom. Pero, madre mía, ¿qué pasa aquí con antes de que? Antes de que is a special, special phrase. Antes de que. Uh, and, and actually, um, actually, the, if you phrase it as antes de que with that word que, that's important. Before the girl washed her hand or before the girl helped. Antes de que indicates that the action has not yet happened. So we have to put it into a past subjunctive, which you don't know how to form yet, but the ayudara right. comes from ayudaron. So let's take out the word que, because here's the way you can really say this without having to do this. Here's the easier way to say this. Because the girl is doing all of this stuff, she is both helping and or she both helped and she washed her hands. Because they involve the same human being, we can construct this so that I don't have to conjugate one of those two verbs. And the way I do that is to take out the word que. Antes de ayudarle a su mamá, la niña se lavó las manos. Before helping. Ah. Uh, I think I was doing antes de que in Duolingo at that point. Okay. See. So there is antes de, which will take an infinitive. Okay. Because you know that after de, a preposition, we have to pop in an infinitive. No se puede usar. Un, un verbo conjugado. We cannot use a conjugated verb right after that little word de. It has to flip back at no, no matter, always. If I've got antes de, antes de, those always hang together to say before antes de. And de is a preposition and de 
always takes the infinitive. Okay. So antes de ayudarle a su mamá, before helping her mom, la niña se lavó las manos. The girl washed her hands. And here's where I have to have a conjugated verb. Antes de que is a different animal. And antes de que indicates I am going to have a person and a conjugated verb. But antes de que always, always, always is going to introduce a subjunctive. So you probably want to stay away from that for now. Okay. Uh, because it might do a couple different things, which are going to be kind of complicated for me to explain right now. So the long and the short of it is, if you want to say the girl is doing both of these things before helping out, she washed her hands antes de, boom, infinitivo. Mm -hmm. Antes de hacer las galletas, before making the cookies. Antes de cocinar con su mamá. Before helping her mom. Okay. See, before before cooking with her mom. Yeah, before cooking with her mom. Uh, antes de infinitivo, nada más. So make it easy on yourself with that. Okay, ¿qué más? Mamá ayudó su hija a hornear. Ah, sí, la mamá... Uh, 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 Le or la ayudó, because they use both with that, a oh, su okay. hija, sí, a, 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 a hornear, to, to bake. ¿Verdad? Sí. Le ayudó o le ayudó a, a lot of people. You know, la and le are kind of used interchangeably with this, but ayudar, they like le with that a lot. La mamá le ayudó a su hija a hornear. She helped her daughter bake. Ah, ah, otro ejemplo. La mamá le enseñó, whoop, le enseñó a su hija a hornear. She taught her daughter to bake. La enseñó a su hija a hornear. She taught her daughter to bake. Okay. Algo distinto? Move on. Sí. Bien. Ah, aquí. Ah. Bien, 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 bien. Tenemos una, una mesa. Uh, alguien, alguien puso la mesa. Somebody set the table. Sí, es una celebración de familia. ¿Qué podemos decir? El, el padre usó un... Cuchillo grande. El padre usó un cuchillo grande. Ah, para, uh, para to do what? Para cort, cortar el pavo. Para cortar el pavo. El pavo. Ah, uh, uh. uh, perdón. Para cortar el pavo, to cut the turkey, ¿sí? Uh, para cortar la carne, lo que sea, ¿sí? Bien, whatever it may be. Ok, bien, sí, usó un cuchillo grande. ¿Le sirvió pavo a sus invitados? Ah, ¿le sirvió pavo a sus invitados? Ah, he served turkey to his guests or to their guests. Lo que sea. Bien, invitados, guests, the invited ones. <laughs> okay. Había mucha comida deliciosa en la mesa. Oh. Ah. 
Me gusta mucho, sí. Había mucha comida deliciosa en la mesa. There was a lot of delicious food. Es descripción. Había, había comida. Comida no es un evento. Food is not an event. Ok, so, había mucha comida. There was lots of, of food. Um, Mm, if I want to say there was a dinner, is a dinner an event? Sí, sí. Yeah, we could rephrase this. <coughs> I want to show you how we might use the other form of haber. And in order to do that, I have to turn it into event. Comida, food, is not an event. Pero una cena, a dinner, a sit-down dinner, si es un evento. So I could rephrase this to say, hubo una gran cena en familia. There was a big family dinner. And now it becomes an event. And I would probably phrase that as hubo. Oh. Pero había mucha comida deliciosa. Es, es para que ustedes puedan ver. It's just so that you guys can see. There might be two ways of talking about that and how haber would switch up. But I have to turn it into an event. And a dinner is an event. Like a party is an event. Like a wedding is an event. Like a meeting is an event. Like an accident is an event. Entonces, I... Otras maneras de expresar. Bueno, vale. ¿Qué más? What else? Marilyn, how, sí, how, yeah. that's not, how that's not de familia? I get confused because it's dinner. Oh, sí, de familia. Una, de familia. De la familia. De la familia. Sí, se yeah. puede. You can. En okay. familia means with everyone gathered around. Okay. Yeah, fold it in. Sí. Bien. Okay. Ah. Uh, Oh, hay otra idea. Is there another idea? La familia se sintó uh, a la mesa para comer todos la comida. Ah, uh, en la mesa para comer comer toda la comida. La comida. La familia se sentó en la mesa. The family sat down at the table. Se sentó en la mesa para comer toda la, uh, toda la comida. Exacto. Muy bien, muy bien. Ok. Uh, vale. Sería posible también decir, por ejemplo, uh, todos celebraron Juntos, uh, uy, a ver, juntos o, o también, igualmente, todos celebraban juntos, a uh, 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 really, you might hear it either way, depende si, sí. if I leave it as, todo, todos celebraban juntos. I probably want to add something to the idea. Uh, uh, cuando uh, papá cortó uh, el pavo. ¿Sí? ¿Bien? ¿Ok? Vale. Ok. Bueno. Excelente. Uh, si hablamos aquí de una fiesta navideña, una fiesta navideña, a holiday-oriented party. All right, Marilyn, based on the previous one with the girl and her mom, so it would be, antes de llegar a la fiesta, una mujer le pidió su gorro. Ah, antes de llegar a la fiesta, because we're talking about the same girl, right? This is the better way to phrase this. Antes de llegar a la fiesta, uh, la mujer 
uh, la mujer uh, put on. Le, le pidio, le pidio, the one oh. who it, so it be le pidio. Le pidio asked somebody for una gorra. Una gorra. <laughs> una gorra. Uh, le pidio una gorra uh, navideña. Uh, una, una gorra de Papá Noel. <laughs> Mm. de Papá Noel. Se dice con frecuencia Papá Noel, a, a veces Santa Claus, a veces Papá Noel. Uh, ok, bien, ok. Me gusta, sí, porque tienen, sí, ella, ella, ella uh, llevaba puesto eh, el sombrero o uh, llevaba puesta la gorra o oh, el gorro, uh, no sé, es gorra, es sombrero, no sé. <risa> sí. uh, una gorra es más como cap. Uh, um, un gorro más es como, uh, if you pull it down over your ears, it's more gorro. Uh -huh. And if it's a cap with a bill, like a, like a baseball cap, it's more gorra. So we could say gorro navideño, pero no importa mucho. That's not a real big deal. El gorro navideño. Okay. Bien. Todos, okay. todos, oh. todos reían y bebían. Todos se reían y bebían uh, durante la fiesta, ¿no? Sí. Everybody was laughing and drinking. Durante la fiesta de la oficina. Sí, así es. Me imagino que es una oficina, una fiesta de oficina, una fiesta navideña en la oficina después del día de trabajo. Así, sí. Everybody was laughing and drinking. Perfecto. Ellos bebieron mucho vino. A la ah, sí. Uh, bebían o tomaban mucho vino. Uh, mucho vino. Uh, bebían o y o, 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 o pues, ok. I should put a slash in there because you can use either, either verb. Bebían o tomaban mucho vino. Ay, sí. Quizás demasiado vino. Demasiado es too much, ¿no? <laughs> Did bueno. You, did you choose imperfecto rather than preterite there? I, I thought that they were, they bebieron. drank, it was, uh, you know, at, the, at that party. So I used bebieron. Bebieron mucho vino, perdón, sí. Bebieron mucho vino, sí, también. They drank a lot of wine. Uh, if you're talking about it being boom and all done, sí. So you can see really... Either way, either one can be used to talk about that. It kind of depends. Bebieron mucho vino uh, ayer. Sí, ayer. Maybe a little better to have a marker there. Or, well, no, you wouldn't have to have a marker there. Bebían, uh, uh, tomaba mucho vino. Here, it, when you've got imperfecto, you probably want to... Uh, um, Imperfecto always implies we want a little more information. It's a little easier, como, como, me, como me dijiste tú, Mark, as you told me, Mark. Bebieron mucho vino, bebieron mucho vino, they drank a lot of wine. That's just, whoop, end of the story, they drank a lot of wine and you're telling what happened, right? Bebían o tom ah, tomaban mucho vino durante uh, la fiesta en la oficina. This would be uh, a little more normal as description. When we use a bebían or a tomaban, we expect a little more description, something telling why or when or what was going on. Whereas bebieron mucho vino, they drank a lot of wine, can be just left alone by itself as, you know, that's just what they did during the party. And that's the end of the story. Okay. ¿Qué más? Mientras bailaba a fiesta, la mujer derramó su vino. Ah, la mujer uh, derramó. She spilled. Oh. 
Uh. Ah, derramó su vino. Uh, uh, no escuché muy bien la primera parte. I could not hear the first part very well. Uh. Okay. Okay. Perdón. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, Okay. Bien. Okay. Are, are we about done with this one? Sí. Could, ¿Listos? Could you uh, give me just uh, one more little summer review on the reflexive verb? I was thinking it would be les. Les rieron. But it, it has to always just be se, right? They laughed. Oh, se vieron. Just give me a one one minute, one second okay. review on the. Ah, uh, ooh, the Would one second laugh. review is that depende. It depends. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you you do sometimes hear reír as laugh. Ah, uh, ah, uh, you often hear reír as reflexive, just because you do. And it would be S-E for a group of people and just one person. Sí, right. Reflexive does not use less. Okay. Reflexivo no se usa less. It always uses se. Me okay. reí. I laughed. Uh, 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 se rió. He laughed. She laughed. Se ri rieron. They laughed. Nos reímos. We laughed. Right. And you could use that either imperfecto or preterito. You know, it depends. Okay. Uh, if you, uh, I will say with this exception, if you express it as they laughed at him, then it pretty much, it's often going to be a preterito because that's like an event that, oh, they laughed at him. How sad. You know, they laughed at poor Rudolph. Yeah. Yeah. But they always used to laugh. Oh, imperfecto. Entonces, sí, depende. Yeah, it kind of does depend. It really, it really does depend on your point of view. Eh, esa, sí, it really is that way. Uh, okay, otra vez. Vamos a ver a otra cosa. And, and reflexive, you just kind of need to get a feel for which verbs are reflexive. Some just are. Uh, some make total sense, you know, the levantarse, sentarse, lavarse las manos, that makes sense. Some verbs are reflexive, even though you're not doing it to a part of your body. Reír, you're not doing it to a part of your body. It just is often used as a reflexive verb. Just okay. Is. Okay. Um, and just something you get accustomed to. Okay, si hablamos de, de aquí, uh, de la foto de Santa Claus y, y sus, <laughs> uh, sus invitados, momentito, uh, a ver, trato de cortar un poquito. Okay, a ver, ¿qué podemos decir? What can we say about this photo? Mi nieta lloró porque, porque, porque Santa Claus lloró, cried, yeah, yeah. Mi nieta, mi nieta lloró. My, my granddaughter cried, lloró. Porque, porque Santa Claus tenía una voz profunda. Uh, porque tenía... Santa Claus tenía, tenía voz funda. Santa Claus tenía, Santa Claus had una voz, voice, voice profunda. Oh, una voz, una voz muy profunda. Ah, porque Santa Claus tenía una voz, la, 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 sí, uh, muy profunda. Uh, uh, probably profunda. Oh, I okay. That's why I was getting confused. Oh. Uh, no, uh, you would not know this, okay? This is not something you could know ahead of time. Profunda means deep. So if we want to say a deep voice, profunda talks about deep when it's a deep lake. Water. 
Uh, yeah, a deep tank. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, a deep, ooh, a deep thought, a deep thought, something of grand importance, great importance. Okay, uh, but usually when we say a booming voice, the big ho ho ho, right? That that echoes everywhere. They'll use this word fuerte. Una voz muy fuerte. So, una voz muy fuerte would probably be the way you would hear that expressed. Okay. Bien. Lloró, lloró, porque Santa Claus tenía una voz muy fuerte. Santa Claus had a very loud voice, very deep voice. Okay. También la niña tiene, or tenía uh, miedo a la barba de Santa Claus. Tenía miedo a la barba. 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 La barba, bird? Sí, de Santa Claus. A la Papá. barba de, de Papá Noel. Sí, de Papá Noel. Sí, la niña tenía miedo a la barba de Papá Noel de Santa Claus. Sí. Ok. Uh, bien. Uh, she was scared of. Es una sensación. It's a sensation. Así es. Ok. Vale. ¿Qué más? Santa Claus tampoco parecía muy feliz. <laughs> Santa Claus tampoco uh, parecía muy feliz. Santa Claus didn't seem so happy either. Okay. <laughs> 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 ah, eso me gusta, me gusta mucho. Okay, uh, I'm watching my time here. I've got three more things to get through, so I don't want to cut off too much, but we want to uh, move this along a little bit. Ooh, aquí tenemos algo muy interesante. Dos niños. Hmm. Ella quería el control moto. Ella quería, bien, el control remoto. She wanted the remote control. Aha, sí, quería, wanted. It's an emotional state. We don't know when she started wanting, when she stopped wanting, quería. When you want to say somebody wanted something, you want quería, boom, end of story. Quería, imperfecto, okay. Pero... No pudieron decidir quién lo encender. Ah, no pudieron decidir. They could not decide. Quién who, lo encender. Uh, oh, who turned it on? Sí. Who was going to turn it on? Is that oh, what we want to say? Well, so that would be uh, who... Quién? Quién voy a... Or I, o iba a ¿Quién iba a encenderlo? And we probably need to name an it. Encenderlo. Yeah. Sí. Encenderlo. Oh, that does accept a direct object. Turn it on. The it is the remote. The it is the uh, uh, Nintendo. The it is the TV. Lo, lo. Very generic. When you mean it in a very generic way, right? And we don't really know you're, you're referring to remote control or the TV or whatever. Yeah, lo works. Lo works. Uh, pero no pudieron decidir. And here it's going to mean very specific. Oh, no, no perdón. Decidir. Decidir. Perdón. Decidir. No pudieron decidir quién iba a encenderlo. They they didn't manage to decide. They didn't make that decision at all. If they just were not able to, it would be no podían decidir. But if your intention is really to say they never settled that at all. They never settled it. They wound up not watching anything at all because they couldn't agree. Then it's no pudieron decidir. ¿Quién iba a encenderlo? Ok. Vale. Bien. ¿Qué más? How about just they fought? Mis, mis hijos lucharon por el control de la televisión. Sí. Uh, el, uh, ¿Otra vez? Mis hijos 
lucharon. Okay, sí. Ah, uh, mis dos hijos uh, lucharon for el control. Sí, ah, uh, ah, uh, um, sí, um, uh, uh, lucharon, sí, por Anacana, por el control remoto. De sí, de la televisión. Los niños parecían muy enojados. Parecían muy enojados. They seemed really angry. Sí, exacto. Ok. Ah, lucharon. Otro verbo es pelear. That's what mine said. Pe pelearon. Hay dos verbos que significan to fight. Luchar y pelear. Ah, luchar. Mm, ah, no, no, no importa mucho. I would say so, son intercambiables. They're really interchangeable. Pelearon, sí. Uh, pelearon, lucharon, igual, igual. Ok. Uh, vale, bien. Y aquí, uh, I want to make sure I fit in all of our stories. So if I cut anybody short, disculpenme, por favor, forgive me, please. Pero vamos a ver. Aquí tenemos a... Uh, uh, es, es algo antes de una cena, antes de la cena, ¿verdad? La hija ayudó a su padre a poner la mesa. La hija ayudó a su padre poner la mesa uh, para poner la mesa. Para poner la mesa. Para poner la mesa. In order to set the table. Sí. Oh, ah, perdón, no. Ayudar, I am losing track. Ah, we need a. Ah. Ah, le ayudó a su padre a poner la mesa. Ayudar a. Ah. Ayudar is one of the, is, is one of those verbs that uses a ah when you reposition uh, an, uh, a second verb with it, right? And if you did it, la hija ayudó a poner la mesa con su padre? Sí, uh, ayudó a poner, ayudó a poner la mesa uh, con su padre. Sí, es posible. Sí, sí, también. Ok, vale. Ellos, ellos pusieron los platos sobre, sobre la mesa. Ok, otra vez. Uh, I'm getting a little echo feedback here. Ellos Otra... pusieron los platos sobre la mesa. Oh, cogieron, picked up? Well, I thought they were putting them down, but... <laughs> well, putting them down. Well, putting them down is going to have to be poner. Uh, oh, pusieron. Pusieron, sí. Pusieron. Sí, pusieron los platos. En la mesa, eso es, sí. Pusieron los platos, sí. Pusieron los platos en la mesa. Sometimes I get a little muffling on, on some of the audio. So, en, disculpen, excuse, sí, disculpen, por favor. Ok, pusieron los platos en la mesa. Muy normal, muy normal. Su abuelo, abuelo me enseñó yo a la niña. A poner la mesa. Ah, sí. Uh, su abuelo uh, le enseñó a la, la niña uh, a poner la mesa. Okay, you don't need all Taught that. her to set the table. Le enseñó a poner la mesa a la nieta, sí. Uh, bien, bien, sí, exacto. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, maybe let's see if we can combine the idea of um, while while the adults were preparing the meal, they were setting the table. Let's get a two going on at the same time. 
And we're going to need that magic word mientras. Mientras los adultos, we're going to use preparar. While the, uh, the adults were preparing food, mientras los adultos preparaban, preparaban la cena, mm -hmm. ¿sí? uh, los dos, the two of them, we're setting the table. We've got them both going out at the same time. So we need to poner, flip it into imperfecto. Los dos. Preparaban. Uh, um, pon, ponaban. Pongaban. Poner. <laughs> E-R. E-R. Instead of ava, 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 it's going to take ia, ia, ia. <laughs> uh, ponían la mesa, ¿sí? Ponían. Yeah. Uh, sí. Sí, uh, los dos ponían la mesa. Eso es. Okay. Bien. Sí. Uh, and so when we've got a mientras, now we're talking about both those things going on at the same time. Podemos ver los adultos al fondo, al fondo, way in the background, al fondo. Sí. Y entonces se dice, sí, mientras los adultos preparaban la cena, los dos ponían la mesa. These two were putting... Uh, uh, setting the table, putting everything down on the table. Okay, a ver, y aquí tenemos a un joven. Here we got a young person here. Ah, en la sofá. Oh, el sofá, perdón, con el sofá. Okay. Hmm. El chico buscó dinero en el sofá. <laughs> el chico buscó dinero. Uh, ah, en el sofá. Uh, 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 uh. Voy a enseñarles vocabulario para indicar algo más específico. Uh, buscó dinero debajo de uh, los cojines del sofá. Sí, los cojines. Cojines son the cushions. cushions. No, sí, yeah. sí. Debajo de los cojines del sofá, sí, buscó dinero. Sí, así es en, en cada casa, en todas las casas de, de todas las familias. Sí, siempre hay, hay monedas. Mode, monedas son coins, ¿no? Uh, monedas, coins. Siempre hay monedas debajo de los cojines. En, 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 un silla, uh, en, en una silla, en un sillón, en un easy chair, en un sillón o en un sofá. Bien, ok. Algo más. I just Anita? looked at different verbs and I uh, thought if you lost your keys, he's swearing. And it came up with maldijo. Oh, sí. Mal, maldecir, and that's bad talk, equals cousin. Yeah. Yeah. Maldecir. Now, maldecir is going to be conjugated like decir, because it's built on decir, okay? Like mantener, maintain, is built on tener. So he was cussing, oh. while it, or, 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 or he cursed. Yeah. Ah, mal dijo. dijo. Mal dijo. That's all I had time for. Okay. That was my Maldijo el joven, ok, y necesi nece uh, necesitamos contexto. El joven, the young man, sí, uh, maldijo porque perdió Su llaves. sus llaves. Sus llaves. Maldijo porque perdió sus llaves. He cussed because he lost his keys. Or maybe you want to describe it as he was cussing because he <laughs> lost his keys. Maldecía uh, porque perdió uh, sus llaves. Uh, I'm going to give you a more colorful, or let us say a more colloquial way 
to talk about cussing. Uh, mal decir is a very proper term, yes, to bad talk, which means to curse. Uh, but uh, there is another way uh, when you use plain old cuss words, sometimes people like to use the verb echar. Echar, echar means to do this. See, echar is to do this, throw. Mm. Okay, so uh, some people in a colorful kind of colloquial way like to say, uh, echaba, e echaba palabrotas. Palabrotas are cuss words. Oh. Ah, or decir palabrotas. Uh, pa palabrotas, see? ¿sí? Palabrotas are cuss words. Echaba palabrotas uh, mientras buscaba sus llaves. He was cussing up a storm while he was looking for <laughs> his keys. And those two are happening at the same time. Yeah. Ah, así. Echaba palabrotas mientras o, o sería posible, uh, decía, sí, decía también. He was, he was saying a lot, but echar is, yeah, 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 he's tossing out those cuss words while he was looking for his keys, <laughs> right? And, and sus llaves es plural, even though they're his keys, they belong to one person. Llaves es plural. Llaves is a plural word. So we need a sus llaves. Sí. Uh, sí. Sí. Uh, perdió. Oh, 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 quizás, quizás el joven, el joven perdió, uh, perdió el control remoto. <laughs> sí. Uh, en el sofá. Uh, uh, sí. Oftentimes in Duolingo, the, the, the one before, the sus llaves, they will say las llaves, but translated as his keys. And does it matter? Do, are, are certain things belong to you, but other things are more generic? Right. Las llaves, uh, yeah, I can, I can totally see where somebody may express that just as las llaves, lost his keys. Um, uh, the sus llaves would specifically say, be indicating they belong to him, not his girlfriend, not his mom, not his grandpa. Yeah, so depende. Um, if he's the only one in the picture, yeah, they may cut that short too, just using the word the, la llave. Sí, mm -hmm. es posible, es posible. A veces es posible. You know, there, there is often not just one right way to plug that except, idea except in. When you get, except when you get dinged for doing the other one. Except when you <laughs> get dinged for it. Sí. Okay. So, for example, many times, many times, with articles of clothing and this as being something that you would keep on your person in a pocket many times with things that are, are kept on your person or articles of clothing just the the word okay is the most common okay and sus llaves would be very specifically directing it to saying oh not the stuff that belongs to somebody else, yeah, but is specifically owned by him. So quite often with those articles that you carry on your person, just putting in las llaves is a normal thing to do. It's like saying, uh, put on your shoes. People will say, ponte los zapatos, put on, and we'll say your shoes. But you know what? We know what you're putting on your feet are going to be the ones that belong to you. So they just use the article because it's an article. Of, yeah. Articles of clothing, things that you carry on your person, which your keys technically kind of fall in that category, often are expressed as just the. Oh, okay. Eat nada más. And that's it. No. Uh, okay. 
Ah, a ver, bueno, y uh, eh, son las once y media, ya son las once y media, already we're at 11.30, uh, I had just about enough time, and I hope I didn't cut too many people short in that, but, pero sí, ustedes hicieron muy bien, you guys did really, really well, and even if you feel like this is halting, uh, please don't feel this way because it is that way when you're learning this. Uh, it, it's nice sometimes to do things off the cuff, but it's nice sometimes to have some time to prep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, yeah. To look up. and sometimes you learn some new words from looking up. So that derramar, that spilling verb, that was a great verb. Der, a, a mí me gusta muchísimo el verbo derramar. Derramar means to spill a liquid or, well, if it's a sloppy, yeah, sauce, yeah, whatever. Uh, and that is a great thing because that's, we all do that at the holiday time, whether it's from tipsy or just clumsiness, we all do that. So, okay. Excelente. Entonces, muchísimas gracias por uh, uh, participar. Thank you so much for participating. Uh, vamos a continuar en, en enero, claro, ¿no? Uh, you know, we'll keep this going through enero. They, they, will, they will plug this in as an actual class in uh, for the spring session. So it will not start looking that way on the registration until... The March sign up. God, I got to think to March. No puedo pensar en, en marzo. I can't think about March yet. It's just too early. Uh, bien. Todo bien. Todo bien. All good? Yeah. yeah. Muchísimas gracias. Thank you so much. Gracias. And you guys have come a super long way this fall session with this. Really, you, really remarkably well. So feel good about what you've got under your belt. Y si bien. Okay. Está bien.